Welcome to Golden Nuggets, where truth and wisdom gets married and bring forth enlightenment. I want to speak to you today about values. Today, we're going to explore the importance and benefits of valuing your values. The moment has come for some soul searching and for realignment. It is time to elevate and evolve. I am A. Ezra, aka the voice of reason, over and out. Welcome to another edition of Golden Nuggets. And today we're going to be looking at such an important topic, which is valuing your values. And if this is your first time joining us, then make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're notified when we upload new videos. So let's get into this. Now, it's important that we understand that everyone has different values. Everyone has different values. And this is important to remember because what you value and what moves you and what drives you to either act or to not engage in something will be completely different from other people. And so you have to make a decision about what's going to be important for you and what's going to be the determination of your decisions and the way that you do things. Because if you are following the crowd and if you are trying to be a people pleaser, then you will often do things that go against your values. And so it's really important to recognize if you value something and that makes you not want to engage in something, not want to go somewhere, not want to do something, that other people around you are doing, and they're continuously trying to get you to engage in those activities, you have to make a decision whether those are the right people that you should have in your life. Everyone has different values, and you want to find people that you can be around that have similar values to you, so that your values are not being violated in order for you to be accepted with the people that you are around. You see, people often seek to trample over your values when they go against theirs. So you may be someone who likes to spend time with your family, but you've got people who say, come on, man, leave them. Let's go out. Let's go and drink. Let's go and do these things, which goes against your values. And it's interesting because this can also have an impact within the workplace. You see, because in lots of workplaces, there is a certain culture that has developed that doesn't necessarily align with the code of conduct or the company values. And so sometimes when you're trying to make a stand and you're trying to separate yourself from things like gossiping and the kind of, you know, the clicks and, you know, where people are not speaking to someone else because of something they've done, but they didn't do anything to you. And they're trying to get you and pull you on side. And it's really important that you value your values and let that drive you and influence your decision making. And so sometimes, you know, because of your values, you might need to say to someone, look, you know, why don't you just talk to the individual rather than talking behind their back? Or your values may make you just separate from someone because they're so negative that they're bringing down your spirit. They're zapping your energy. And so it's really important that you be aware and recognize where you need to say to people, whether that's literally with your mouth or physically by distancing yourself, stop. I'm not allowing you to trample over my values. And some people at times, will try to keep you operating out of what is best for them and steer you away from your values. And so I want you to take a moment to just think about people in your life, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's colleagues, and ask yourself, 
are these people aligning with my values? Do they do things and say things that boost and, 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 and support my values? Or are they trying to steer you away? Do you notice that you're always on the defensive when you're around them? Do you notice that you're always being compromised or having to make decisions that could compromise your values? Because if that is the case, you need to make a decision. You need to value your values. And the truth of the matter is this. When being liked becomes more important than doing what is right, we can become easily controlled by others. One of my values is to do what is right over what is easy. And it's easy to follow the crowd. It's easy to accept things that you know violate your values. It's easy to just say, oh, I'll let it go this time. But those things are detrimental to who you are as a character and to the values that you hold. And so don't allow anyone to control you, but be controlled by your values and let that be the determination to what you do and to what you say. And if someone doesn't like you for being your authentic self, for doing what you believe is right, for following your values, for having a sense of integrity, then you need to ask yourself, is that the person that you actually need in your life? Only you can make that decision and your values will determine what that answer will be. Stephen Colvie, who was the writer of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, a great book, which I would encourage you to read if you haven't yet. And he said, Peace of mind comes when your life is in harmony with true principles and values and in no other way. And it's so true. One of the things that really brings peace of mind, that when you go to sleep and put your head on your pillow, you can sleep lightly because you're not burdened by guilt, by remorse, because of the things you did that violated who you are. And so when you are in harmony with your true principles and your values, the things that move you and you're moving in line with them, you can sleep a sweet sleep. You can have peace of mind because you know you did what was right. And so don't make the mistake that many people do of keeping the peace with other people and creating inner storms. Because as the African proverb says, when the enemy within is conquered, the enemy without can do us no harm. And when you've conquered those things within you that wants to come against your values, the fear and the worry and the doubt and all these things that will make you think, let me compromise because it will keep the peace. It will make them like me. When we're able to conquer those enemies, the enemy without can do nothing for you because you're so aligned with your values. You're so connected to them. They are part of you. They influence you. And then that's when you have consistency, you have discipline, and people can expect, you know, to see a standard from you. You stand out from the crowd. People know if someone made an accusation against you, they would say, nah, so-and-so wouldn't do that because they know and can see your values. And so I want to just touch on the power of your values because your values really do influence you. You see, once you have them and you build them up, every time you operate out of them, it's like you're doing a rep. You know, it's like you're building yourself up. And so internally and from a spiritual sense and from a, you know, a, a higher consciousness sense, because of your values, you look 
internally, although people may not be able to see this, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're built, you're strong, and those values influence you. And they save you because they keep you from making those really bad bobos, those really bad mistakes, where you was focusing on other people or doing things based on what other people wanted. And so they, they influence you. They become your inner counselor. They become your protection. And then you know the beauty of this? That not only does it influence you, but then over time it influences other people because they see those values and they like it. They appreciate it. Those people who are meant to be in your life, they appreciate it. And you know what? It begins to influence them. They begin to say, do you know what? I need to do a bit more of that. You know, I really saw so-and-so do that. And the fact that they were honest about that thing is really powerful. I need to start being honest about things. I need to speak my truth. And so not only, first of all, does it influence you, which is a fundamental thing, but you then influence others. You become the standard that other people want to reach. People want to be around you because they like what you stand for. So value your values. And I love this quote from John Stewart which really sums up what I'm talking about here. And he said, if you don't stick to your values when you're being tested, they're not values, they're hobbies. And I just want you to reflect on that for a moment. When the going gets tough, when the situations arise, when you have to make a decision between keeping the peace and making people happy and doing what's right for you, and standing by your values. Who wins? Who wins? Because if when the stakes are high, you drop your values, they're not really values, they're hobbies. And so I hope today, I hope this message is reaching. I know there's someone who today is, is you, you know, you have been violating your values. You have been allowing people and situations to, to um, get a higher priority than your values. And I want to encourage you and let you know that today you can make that change. It's a decision. It's a choice. And I ask you to make that choice today. From today, say no more. In whatever area it may be where you have been allowing your values to be trampled over. And I tell you what, as a result of that, it's affected your confidence, it's affected your self-esteem, it's affected the way you see yourself. And today, I want to encourage you to begin to value your values, because when you do, it will uplift you. It will build you up. It will give you peace of mind. It will give you more confidence because you've done what was right for you. You see, when we say to ourselves and we reflect and say, I couldn't even do this thing, even though it's so important to me, then psychologically that affects your confidence because you think, then what can I do? And so I want to encourage you today, make that choice today and begin to value your values and you will see it will change and reshape all of your life. So I want us to go in a bit deeper now and I want us to look at values and goals because I think sometimes people confuse the two and are not clear on how this works. So we're going to start off looking at the values and what that really means and then afterwards we're going to look at the goals and how they are linked to your values, okay? So your values are the things that you believe are important in the way you live and the way you work. So it gives you a framework of how you're going to navigate through life, how you're going to navigate through your working relationships with other people, how you're going to work through life in general, people that you meet, strangers, friends, family, partner, children, etc. 
We have values. And they should determine your priorities. And deep down, they're probably the measures that you use to tell if your life is turning out the way you want to. And this is why it's so important to value your values. Because they determine your priorities. They're the reason why you will say no to something that you may want to do or like doing, but it goes against or will impact on something else that's more important to you. And so they're like the measuring rods. They're the GPS, the internal GPS system that helps you to navigate through stormy waters, through trials and tribulations, through times and moments when you may feel emotional or you may be upset about something, but your values direct and drive you so you don't act first and have action precede thought and then afterwards have the regret of saying, why did I do or say that? Value your values. And then we have goals. And I'm sure for the majority of you listening to this, you know in terms of goals that we need to set SMART goals, meaning that they are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. So that in terms of when we want to achieve those goals, that we actually have the best chance of doing it because we've set those timeframes, because it's relevant and relevant to your values. And that it's attainable, it's something that can be achieved. And that it's measurable in terms of that you know and can see the progress that you're making. And that it's specific so that you know when you've achieved it. And so a goal is an idea of a desirable or future result that people envision, plan, and commit to achieving. So first of all, you need to envision it. You need to see it. You need to be able to believe that you can do that thing. And then you have to plan for it. You have to put and make active steps to make it happen. Because failing to plan is planning to fail. And then you need to commit to achieving it. You have to put in the work. You have to daily think with intention as how you're going to progress towards that goal. And so you can achieve it. And we commonly endeavor to reach goals over specific periods by setting deadlines. Yeah. So that's your measuring rod to see if you're on the right path, especially if it's a big goal that has been broken down into smart goals and that you have to achieve those milestones. So that's the difference between values and goals. So let's go a bit deeper and look into values. Now, your values should always come first and your goal second. Your values always should come first and your goal should come second. Because values are the qualities that you want to bring to your ongoing behavior. And so whatever your goal is, it should be based out of your core values. It should be something that's keeping you in line with with those core principles, with the foundation, with the anchor within you. And so those qualities that you want to bring to your ongoing behavior are what helps you to have that consistency, that discipline, and that makes people know and understand this is what you can expect from so-and-so. They are also the qualities that you want to use to achieve your goals. Because if you're doing something that aligns with your values in terms of the goals that you're achieving, it's going to bring joy. It's going to bring peace. It's going to bring happiness. It's going to bring confidence. And it's going to make you feel good. That pushes you to go on to do more. And so when you achieve your goals, or if you don't achieve them, you still operate out of your values. So it's always a win-win. And so it's really important to recognize that. Because regardless of the outcome, if you are operating out of your values, 
you can still sleep well at night. You can still have peace of mind because you did what was right. Now, values come first because they're here right now in this very moment and you choose to act on them or not. So with every decision that you make, you make a choice if you want to make it out of your values or not. So they come first because they're here right now. They're the things that you are operating out of. Even right now, as you're hearing this message, if it is touching and either encouraging you or convicting you, it's because of your values. And you can make a choice of what you're going to do with this information. Are you going to push those feelings down or are you going to sit with them, accept them and recognize and make decisions to change because you want to live by your values? And using your values enables you to successfully achieve your goals. You will be your greatest and you will do your best when you're operating out of your values because then it's connected to your why and your purpose and that thing deep within you that drives you and that's really important especially when you're dealing with difficult situations and you have to make challenging um, decisions so i want you to think of yourself as a master chef okay and every single day as a master chef, you need to make bread. That's one of the things within your role that you do. You make this special bread and you have to make it every single day. Well, as a master chef, I want you to know that your values is the flour that you sprinkle on that bread to be able to make it to form that master bread that only you can make. But I want you to also be aware that the bread is your life and so it's important that you sprinkle your values not anyone else's but your values on all aspects of your life every single day and so start your day with intention what are you saying to yourself what are you thinking about when you start your day so that you can sprinkle your values on your life and that you can create that special bread that no one else can make and that when other people smell it and taste it they can taste and see that the things that you do are good and so values can't just be words on the page it can't just be something you put up on the wall it can't be something you've written in your diary or in your planner to be effective they must shape your actions they must be the first thing you think about and the last thing that you consider when making decisions they have to be the thing that balances you that anchors you that directs you and so it's really important that you shape that it shapes your decisions value your values because you're always going to be called upon to think about them. You're always going to be called upon on a daily basis to make decisions where your values will make you go to the right and doing things based on for other people or to keep the peace or to, to um, avoid confrontation on the left. So it's very important that we are clear about our values and that we value them. So now I want to talk about goals for a little bit because it's really important that we understand if we want to achieve those goals, there is certain things that we need to be aware of and understand. And so as Tony Robbins said, setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. So when you set a goal and you and the importance of writing it down is you have taken something from being invisible, it wasn't anywhere, and you're writing it down and your eyes see it. 
And so it's the beginning of that transition from the invisible coming into the visible. And it's really important that when you write something down and you begin to focus on it and you set that as a goal, you are actually now in your mind's eye creating something that's a focus point. And we have a thing known as the RAS, the Rattigla Activating System, that works as a system that once you pay attention and you focus on something, it will then bring things to your attention that will help you to reach and achieve that goal. And a simple way of explaining the RAS is, you may notice when you bought a car or you bought a pair of shoes or a jumper or something, jacket, whatever it may be. And once you bought it, you notice, you see it everywhere. And prior to you getting that thing, you never noticed it. That was because once you bought it, your RAS now made it be a focus point for you that you see it wherever you go. And that same thing happens with your goals. And that's why writing them down can be so powerful because you are turning the invisible into the visible. But it's important that we understand about goals and where they sit in terms of priorities because goals come second because they are in the future. They're not something you have right now. Your values are what you have right now. And your goals is something that you're looking to achieve in the future. So by definition, they are something you're moving towards. And once it is achieved, it's not a goal anymore. Because you've achieved it. You've reached it. It's been, it's done. Okay. But by placing so much emphasis on the goal, the value gets lost, which is the undercurrent, the anchor, and the golden thread that will keep you on track to achieve the goal. And so we cannot be so driven by the goal that we say, oh, well, that's something that I would normally not do, but I'm going to do this so I can achieve the goal. Because it gets lost, you know, and you often end up doing something and intentions and, and what you was hoping for may not be the outcome. And so your values lost and you didn't achieve the goal. So it's really important that you always recognize that what you have right now is your values. And if you stick to your values and you're consistent and you work hard, you will get to the goal. But when you violate your values and the values become lost, you become someone stuck out in the sea, you know, with, with no boat, no ship, nothing to drive you. And so it's really important that we understand goals come second. Values provide the daily little steps to enable you to reach your goal. And it is the behavioral principle known as shaping behavior. So when you have your values, when you hold on to those things and you allow them to be the principle of your behavior, they shape your behavior. They make you do certain things. You see, some, someone's values can make them get up early every day and exercise. Someone's values is going to make them eat a certain way so they don't harm themselves. Someone's values is going to make them have self-control so they're not saying the wrong things to people. It shapes your behavior. And this is why it's so important that you value your values and don't allow people, situations, or circumstances to deter you from those values. For example, instead of eating to lose weight, be eating to nurture and heal yourself. You see, because that's how you create healthy goals that are governed and directed by your values. Because your value is your body is a temple. Your value is you want to, you know, do things that add life to you. Your value is you want to live a long, good life. And so you tell yourself as a goal, I'm going to eat to nurture and heal myself. And that's how you're able to achieve the goals because then when you're out or someone says, oh, do you want this food or do you want to go McDonald's? Because of your values 
and the goals you set based on your values, you're like, no, I'm okay. I'll have the apple. I'm okay. I'll have the water instead of the fizzy drink. And so it's really important that when you are setting your goals, you're setting them based on the foundation, the anchor, the golden thread of your values, and you set them in a the right way that they are shaping your behavior. And so values are like the soul from which morals, ethics, and code of conduct grow. And so whenever you're setting your goal, make sure the foundation of that is your values. And when you do, they will keep you. They will guide you. They will lead you and ultimately bring you to success on a multiple level. So it's not just success in achieving a goal, but it's success in maintaining your peace. It's success in feeling fulfilled. It's success in standing in your values, your morals, and your principles. So when we're thinking about goals, you want to grow what matters. And remember, not just the goal, but what matters ultimately is your values. One step at a time, little by little, your steps will add up, especially when they are of a foundation and principle of your values, your purpose, and your why. So the final thing I want to leave you with is this. It's not hard to make decisions when you know what your values are. And I think this is a very powerful quote. And it is very true that in most cases, in most cases, it is not hard to make a decision when you're governed and directed by your values. Because they are going to lead you. They are going to guide you. They're going to keep you within the boundaries of what is the right thing based on what you believe, based on what's important to you, based on what you value. And so I encourage you all today, begin to make your values a priority and they will influence you. And then you will influence others. And if that means you need to make some changes, make those changes and look back over your life look back over up until this point in any of the areas where you have not been valuing your values in in relationships and decisions what was the benefit how did it serve you and if it isn't and if it's not fruitful and if you do not feel happy in those relationships you need to make a decision so i just want to encourage if you found this useful beneficial and it enlightened you in any way then i encourage you to subscribe to my channel and um, look at an abundance of videos on multiple topics that are there to support you encourage you and lift you up so that you can live your best life thank you for watching this video i hope it helped to bring some realignment to your internal compass leave a comment and let me know one thing that you're going to take away from what you've just heard and make sure you share this video with your friends and your loved ones and those who you know need to hear this message and check out my channel for many videos dedicated to supporting and empowering you and remember to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell as this is me calling you for our next one-to-one. -one. So as always, stay blessed, remain grateful, and manifest your greatness.